You're listening to The Angry Designer, where we cut through the industry of both to help frustrated graphic designers survive and thrive. Hey. <laughs> That's a thunderclap. Thunderclap. <laughs> Learn that from our friend Draplin, of course. <laughs> thunderclap. What did he say? Thunderfuck. Thunderclap. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love that guy. <laughs> so awesome. Thunderfuck. That's right? great. Right? Uh, that should be a band name. That should be a band name. <laughs> <laughs> So Look, what the hell, man? I know we're starting. Everybody's we're wondering. starting with empty glasses today, Sean. <laughs> we're starting. Uh, I don't know whether I like this. <laughs> so are we going to be boring during yeah, our yeah, podcast? Yeah, yeah, Because we haven't we been just drinking. Have a very we'll just regular. talk. Yes, we'll just talk. It does feel weird, <laughs> you know, not doing this. You know, signs that you might have a problem. I hope not, though. I <laughs> exactly. hope not. Exactly. Exactly. No, like but it. I was at the LCBO mm-hmm. yesterday, the oh, Lick Bow, oh, the oh, Lick Bow. The Lick Bow. And I saw something that I was like, at first I walked by it. I was like, no, I can't do that, right? Because, you know, it's, it's you know, the, the, the type of drink it is, I'm like, oh, I don't know if this show we've ever done anything like this. But then it was the packaging that kept on drawing me back. Ooh, okay. Right. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I think we need to just, you know, have a little bit of a talk about the packaging and roll it into this episode. Okay. All right. Because okay. I thought, so, okay. So maybe the drink won't wow you, but I think the packaging <laughs> you can appreciate. All right. Check this bad boy out. Okay, Ready? Here we go. Oh. All right. So we're looking at a Jack Daniels. And McLaren, and I, I think it is just legitimately Jack Daniels, which we'll try and we haven't had on the show. No. But look at this design. There is so much going on with design. Wow. We have two brands together, two huge fucking brands, okay? Right. Jack Daniels, classic, okay? Beautiful. The, their logo is just on silver, on black. But then we've got the McLaren, bright, almost neon um, orange, yes. okay? You know, like the whole Formula One experience. And and although, you know, McLaren isn't exactly my favorite team, you know, right now, although they are kicking ass right now, mm-hmm. I have to, like, I mean, this whole two iconic brands come together, you know, and they're like united in independence, living boldly and doing it responsibly I, I i was like you know what we need to talk about what's going on here yes okay because this is not our usual simple clean elegant type of packaging right nope. like no nope. you know i get it the top might be which yes. is a little symbol with all black and white space but there's a lot going on here there right is. we've got pattern in the background we've mm-hmm. got big bolts of colors we got shapes right yeah. we got two logos like in some ways this is just kind of like over the top and i mean it's just like yeah go ahead go ahead that's really sexy isn't it sexy yeah, right like, like i that's... mean again McLe- mclaren's kicking ass this year you know yeah. i get they got a good team this year in f1 uh, although i am a ferrari guy yes, and of course and i am a red bull guy <laughs> because of how great they're doing this year mclaren's kind of coming up again and yeah. i think they'd be my third favorite but i mean I couldn't pass this up, and I think that this is perfect opportunity for what we wanted to talk about today. Yes, right. Oh, that really. So works. here, crack this okay. bad boy all open right. all while right. we like. So again, it isn't the most simple design, and that's all right. But I mean, again, people. I mean, the inside is bright colored, right? Look at that. Oh, look at that. That's really. Look nice. at that label. You know, I may have to just buy a second one to just keep and store because that's that's pretty hot. That's great. Look at that. That's really sexy. Isn't it? So again, it's not it's not this whole simplicity. We've seen this whole oversimplification lately, which is fucking, you know, it's not bad, but it's boring. Yes. And we all know how boring this is, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like people are calling it blanding. Because like you're literally <laughs> like taking these these awesome brands and just making them bland. Yes, Hence exactly. blanding, right? Yes. And again, you know, you know, like this whole everybody feels so pressured to be like doing everything simple, simple, simple. And we've loved simple. It's great. For a long time, yes, right? And it's yes. elegant and you know, there's a lot of benefits to simple. Yes. Um definitely, like, you know, it helps digitally, it's easier to reproduce when something's simple. But you know what? There is a new train of thought Mm -hmm. out there. And by no means is it brand new, but it's this whole thought that less isn't necessarily more, but less (laughs) is a bore. Okay? So, you know, there is, and I love that, right? Less is a bore. You know, it's it's exciting, Mm -hmm. right? And it, 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 it feels much more creative mm-hmm. than what we've been living through for the past little while. All right. So first, okay, let's, so before we get too deep, yep. cheers. cheers. All right. Here we go. Good, good jack. Take a whiff. 
Smells like Jack. Ooh, it really does, doesn't it? All right, so how does Jack stand up compared? You know, it's actually not as bad <laughs> after all the stuff that we've drank. That's pretty good. Good old Jack Daniels. This is—it's a little harsh going down, it's but tougher. It's a little rougher, and it is how I remembered. And I mean, yeah, but that was young and foolish. I'm shoot this, <laughs> but as a sipper, I could appreciate this. Yeah, you know, this would be nice on the rocks. Oh, I mean, some people would. might kick my ass for saying that, but and and yeah, yeah, I know yeah. you're gonna kick my ass. Uh oh. But you put some Coke in this too. Oh. <laughs> I know. Well, Jack and Coke Jack is a and thing. Coke is, Jack a, is and legit, Coke is a right? Thing. But right. But but I'm surprised at how nice it is just on its own. On its own, right? Yeah. I'm pretty impressed with this. Yeah, and it's I just the same good. thing, right? It is. This is There's just no good old Jack Daniels. But I will be going back and buying another one of these to keep because yes. that's a nice looking package. That's really really sexy. So the challenge lately with all this oversimplification is that I mean I get it. Good design is clean, and it's a balance of hierarchy, and and we you know we've got all these design principles to adhere to, right? Yes. But you have to admit. It's kind of getting boring out there. It is getting really boring. Like we're we're talking we and we've talked about logos and stuff like this now. Right. You know, you can't just put Inter your your brand name in Inter and, and then call it a day. Leave it like track it a little bit. And boom. So logo's many done. brands did. Hundred thousand right? dollars, please. Yeah. So <laughs> many brands did. Yes. It kind of feels like they were they were just jumping on the on the bandwagon here, yes. which you know kind of feels like they were copying out. So this new way of going about this. And again, I have to stress, this isn't new. No, this is very old. It's not, right? But, you know, it's it's just, it is a way for brands now to inject excitement mm -hmm. into themselves. And, and you know, get get some color, get some life, get some emotional. Yeah. Get some emotion into, yes. into the brands, right? Yeah. So while minimalism, mm -hmm. okay, embraces this whole less is more mm -hmm. idea, yep. or less is a bore. Less is a bore. Okay. Less is a bore. What we're going to talk <laughs> about today is maximalism, Ooh. okay? And maximalism <laughs> nice. embraces a more is more yes. kind of mantra, okay? Yes. Like maximalism intentionally breaks the rules of design, yes. which is what's fantastic about mm -hmm. this, right? Mm -hmm. It challenges every fucking design principle right. of simplicity and minimalism. It goes against the grain and, and it approaches the exact same topics in a completely different way. Totally. So I thought that this would be a fucking fantastic topic. That, you know, it <laughs> yes. actually gets me excited. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, not that, not that we're chasing trends or anything mm -hmm. like that, but there is a bubbling kind of undercurrent going on with this mm -hmm. this movement which is great there's tons of articles available there's amazing amazing work, work. people are doing with this. well and this and this started about a week and a half ago because we had a we had a new follower come aboard right and mm -hmm. every single person who subscribes to us on instagram right i always check out their feed i check out their work mm -hmm. i thank them right thanks for coming out i try really 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 hard to reach out to you and and forgive me if i don't but almost everybody you know uh, yeah. reaches out to and this guy's stuff Rem he came from Sweden, Ooh. and it literally took me back to early 2000s, late 1990s, you know, rave flyers. I used to collect oh. rave flyers in my younger days, right? Oh. And I regret, when we moved here, they disappeared. Oh, I don't no. know what the hell happened. I know I'm pissed off about that, mm. but they were always so jam-packed with color, with image, with shape, with yep. texture. They yes. were so, you know, bizarre and had all these, like, layers of story going in there. And mm -hmm. every single flyer, just, you want to keep because they were your postcard size or wide or round or square whatever yeah but every one told a different story and it got you excited yes and that's what this guy's work you know kind of like it, 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 it totally reminded me of that so between that between seeing this bottle right yeah. and thinking to myself like shit dude like this breaks <laughs> all the rules totally and it totally fits this whole idea of maximalism yeah. this isn't as crazy as some of the stuff out there no but you cannot tell me that this is a minimal package nope, by any means not. right but it really works too, though. Oh, like you got the classic vintage logo here. The like, vintage logo awesome. with the McLaren colors yes. and their sleek logo. And I mean, These again, they're geometric shapes. They absolutely really nice. contrast each other, but they just look, it's fantastic. And yeah. then the shapes, you know, the textures, mm -hmm. the repetition, like this embraces everything yes. that we're going to talk about. And if you guys actually want to see this, we will be posting this on the YouTube channel. Cool. And if you're on the YouTube channel watching this right now, it's fucking awesome. Isn't it? <laughs> so, all right. Let's let's start from the beginning yeah. because we do have some younger um, listeners, some earlier designers who may not be familiar with this because mm -hmm. as of the past 
you know, eight to 10 years, all we've experienced is minimalism. That's right. Okay. That's so right. by definition, according to Wikipedia, mm -hmm. maximalism in the arts is a reaction against minimalism. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an aesthetic of excess. Mm. Ooh, and redundancy, oh. right? But it's it's kind of true, right? Yes, like, totally. it's, it's, but I mean, if you had to make it in a little bit more normal terms, yeah, okay. Maximalism in branding, it's about embracing the big, the bold, the beautiful, right? Mm. It's got characteristics like vibrant colors, mm -hmm. like we have here, right? Yep. It's got like um, you know, bold color combinations. Like here, we've got gray, we got black, we've got this bright neon orange. You know, intricate details like we have here, contrasting patterns which we have the jack daniels against you know like the mclaren logo mm -hmm. um you know it, it's like we got tons of different fonts here that really don't make sense the jack daniels logo itself has got a whole bunch of different fonts if we want to analyze that on its own this is true okay it's yes. probably i think it's pushing six different <laughs> fonts on there but i mean you know the reality is right it's, it's just it's got these contrasting patterns these ornamental patterns they're dense multiple fonts you know it's just it's abundance yes okay yeah. and the funny thing it's got little to no white space. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which, what have we been harping right, on? About? Right? <laughs> if, I mean, if maximalism, if there was a phrase to, to define mass, it'd be like, fuck white space. Fuck white space. <laughs> That's right. But it's true. And, you know, it's funny because when I, it, the reason why I got so jazzed and excited about, you know, when I'm starting just to revisit all this is because mm -hmm. this was the whole design um, genre that got me into this space. Oh. And it wasn't until I was revisiting all of this and I'm like, oh my God, I remember this. Oh my God, my rape flyers, you know, the excitement yeah. of this, this doesn't remind me of anything new. It mm -hmm. brings me back like uh, 20, 25 years. Yes. And then I think back, right? Like my, my very first business card when I was a freelancer, total maximalism <laughs> it looked like a little rave flyer right it had a big m it had lines and shapes and patterns everything awesome. was layered right oh my so God. but but by no means is this is maximalism anything new no okay because no. this shit's been going on for hundreds of years hundreds of years yes the earliest i found in my research was like mid century 1800s mm. this is when it when it first kind of started Right now, what we're dealing with is clean, minimal simplicity and design. But, right. you know, Baroque was all, you know, intricate and yes. patterns. And I mean, people would spend, you know, weeks and weeks just just to kind of create this little ornate pattern in the side yes. of a building. Yeah. Right. Right. So but then you got yeah. from Baroque right um, in this century, you know, Art Nouveau. You know, oh. took advantage of that. And if you look at some Art Nouveau, some early Art Nouveau, you know, some advertising, some designs. Again, they brought in all these layers, layers and layers. Yes, right. Yes. You know, but then. My favorite time, the postmodernism. Mm -hmm. Okay, like we go back to some of the Andy Warhol stuff, the mm -hmm. Lichtenstein stuff. I yep. mean, it was big, bold, layers, shapes, Tons colors, right? Yep. There was so much going on there that you couldn't, you could not smile yeah. looking at that shit, yes, totally, right? Totally. And again, and it's good because it broke all the rules. Yeah. And that was okay. Yes. Right? Like that was yes. totally cool. So then from a graphic design standpoint, yep. okay, and back when I was getting into this, right? Paula Shure, mm -hmm. right? She created a poster series, um, Public Theater, New York. Oh. Okay. And it was a dude in the front, had like letters all over. He was on a yellow background, <laughs> right? I think he was all black and white, but big black fonts, text all around him. Like nice. it was so in your face, yeah. right? Like you couldn't not look at it. And this is somebody who was known for making Helvetica famous. Yeah, totally. Okay, she yeah. totally embraced, you know, Helvetica. And, and then granted, you know, her stuff's all over the place, but that poster, okay, absolutely was yeah. a maximalist design, right? Nice. And then David Carson, ah. again, David Carson. If you look at the early Ray Gun stuff, and, and mm. you could argue his entire career since, yep. right? He hasn't really been about clean, elegant, simple, yep. right? It's been big, bold, you know, tons busy. of fonts, busy, yep. layers, yeah, shapes. Lots of stuff. Even now his artwork lately is incorporating layers and layers of images and textures and fonts, right? Yes, so yes. again, you could totally argue that this dude was totally a maximalist and still is yep. with his graphic design style, with his art style, you know, and just that's just his style. Yes. So this yep. shit's been around for a long time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it just got lost with the whole digital age and, and, and simplicity, no? I, I don't know. I, is it is it a laziness on our part? Mm, could be. Is it, well, are we bending to what the clients want? 
You well, know? well. This, these are the kind of things that are it's just like. Because it is hard to sell something like this it's to a very customer, difficult. is it, yes. right? Absolutely, Unless, like, it would be. Like you say, it's a it's a one-off social post or a postcard or some kind of, you know, like a poster for... It's, a, it is you know tricky, I mean? like, right? Like, yeah. it, if, you'd, if you'd sell it to a customer, you'd have to sell to them in the fact that, you know, if you want to make a huge impact, if you want your brand to scream yes. ahead of everybody else, right. and you have a bold enough brand or personality or brand personality to back it... Yeah. Then, you know, the more I'm thinking about this, big, bright, poppy colors and fun, big, minimalist fonts just won't do it. Mm -hmm. Like, when I'm looking at a box like this, like, that's pretty, like, I mean, it stood out yep. against a everything sea else. of everything else, exactly. right? And it's to the point where, and I, I passed it up, but I kept walking by it. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> that is really cool. It's just, it looks like nothing. It breaks, it, it broke apart from everything else exactly. on that shelf. Exactly. And it seems to work really well, especially in package design. Yes. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I also right. see it in craft beers. Oh yeah. See, think oh, about it. When you go to the craft beer aisle right. and you're you're you got a wall of craft beer, you've got these, yeah, fine, there's a couple nice clean brands and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you got these other ones that they've got like all these crazy stories and they're like edge to edge. There's no white space yeah, anywhere. Exactly. You you almost you're you're almost finding a hard time to find out what the hell the name <laughs> of the is, beer yeah, is, right? Is you're called? identifying it. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's a, a brewery out of Hamilton. I can't remember the name of them, but they're, they're all their labels are different. It's, Every one of their labels. Yeah. And oh my god, what was the company? Yes. Collect, collective Arts. Collective Arts. Right. Thank you, guys. Yes. You want to be fucking blown away? Yes. Go visit the Collective Arts website yes. in Hamilton. And I'm talking. So they yeah. um, employ um, artists, and all their labels, I believe, are just artist series. Yes. They started this whole trend. Yeah. If you know, I, I think it's safe to say, and they've been around for a hell of a long time. Mm -hmm. But I mean, again, um, you know. Wow, and this stuff stands out. It totally does, exactly. Right, it's it, against a whole bunch of you know your typical corporate beer kind of stuff. You know, everybody knows what the Canadians and the Blues <laughs> right? look like. Yeah, right? like right, yawn, right. <laughs> but craft beer needs to stand apart, exactly. And these are small little breweries, small yeah. brands that had to compete against these giant mammoth companies, exactly. right? Like yeah. Anheuser Busch and yeah. all that. Yeah. So, what better way to do it than than compete? at a store level, mm -hmm. right? And that's what they've done. And I think that that's what's worked for them. I think that there's more, you know, um, you know, uh, maximalism in beer cans and beer labels than I've seen in anywhere else. Yeah, totally, yeah. I, you exactly. know, now it's like if you're too boring, you're just going to disappear. <laughs> exactly. Can you tell I'm really excited about this topic? <laughs> yeah, big time. Big time. He's, he's pinging around the room here. Holy cow. Because <laughs> well, again, this, this is what got me into this space. Exactly. And, and, you know, I, I've been saying how I've been feeling um, a little uh, burnt out lately mm -hmm. creatively, yep. but I feel something igniting again. And I think Ooh. it's because of this all Good. over again, to be honest. Good. I'm, uh, and again, and the nice thing about this is you feel more empowered, more creative, mm -hmm. right? Now, on the sudden, you know, graphic design feels more art-like yes. again, right? Yes. And oddly, even though we say that there's a huge difference between an artist and a graphic designer, mm -hmm. David Carson, um, you know, has, has gone on by saying that why can't they both be the yes. same? Yes, there's a light, there's there's a there's a beautiful marriage there. You know what I mean? Like the potential. If you do it right, yeah, exactly. And you're we're going to talk about how to do it right mm -hmm, later mm -hmm, on, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, you can you can actually make this, and it's very personal at this point too, right? Like yeah. you're putting your stamp on something, absolutely. But you are. you're also you know leaning on the design aspect and all the knowledge that you've acquired over absolutely, the years. Yeah. right? So, okay, so I wrote down some stuff here, mm -hmm. okay? Um, basically, you know, just, just to give some education on this, mm -hmm. okay? We have a minimalism versus maximalism. Yes. Okay? Ooh, the, so the throwdown. The throwdown. <laughs> minimalism strives for simplicity, right. okay, which we always talk about. Strip away all the unnecessary elements and reduce the designs to the bare minimum. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Nope. That's great. It's brilliant. Contrast, mm -hmm. maximalism strives for abundance. It embraces a ton of elements to create these visually dense composi compositions. Mm -hmm. So where one is less is more, the other mm -hmm. one is no, 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 <laughs> more is more, okay? And that's fantastic. Yeah, that's right. Minimalism uses a limited color palette with focus on one or two primary colors, which isn't bad if mm -hmm. that's your brand and that's Good. your intent. That's fine. Yep. Maximalism, you know, is vibrant. It's bold color palettes and it uses contrasting hues to create this giant visual impact, mm -hmm. okay, that you can't miss. Yep. Minimalism uses clean and minimal 
typography. Yes. Okay. Very simple, very clean, easy to read, yep. very, very light typefaces where maximalism intentionally uses playful and expressive fonts. You know, they can be bold. They're expressive. They could be experimental. Mm. They can break the rules. Yes. Okay. And that's the nice part. And again, fonts, David Carson, yep. breaking the breaking rules. Breaking the rules. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. Minimalism. Generous use of white space, okay, <laughs> to create breathing room, emphasize key elements. And again, yeah. we always, you know, stress the importance of white space, yep. right, to bring your focus, to create groupings, yes. okay? Yep. Maximalism, on the other hand, embraces this entire visual stimulation and it aims to overwhelm the senses. Mm. It doesn't want to create groups. It creates one giant group, okay, right. one composition. You know, it, it creates this big immersive experience, Yes. all right? Yep. Good, fun, absolutely. Very different approaches, mm -hmm. right? Minimalism often has a very clear and straightforward hierarchy with a focus on clarity and simplicity. Yes. Cool. Maximalism <laughs> challenges the conventions of hierarchy, right? Yep. Creating visually extravagant aesthetic pieces mm -hmm. okay there is still a hierarchy in place yeah but it's not the common hierarchy that's right minimalism tries to simplify the message to the point where there is only one single thing to remember yeah again fantastic great very important for a product huge maximalism tries to tell an entire fucking story <laughs> incorporating <laughs> images texts and mixing that up with emotion. Yes. So again, where one, you're walking away saying, yes, I can get a better night's sleep. Yeah. The other one is like, holy <laughs> shit, I better get a better night's sleep. Otherwise the boogeyman's going to come to get me. And by the time I'm 70, I'm going to have like a rage attacks. <laughs> I got exactly. that all from one composition. <laughs> one composition, everybody. Yes, that's right. Get your sleep, kids. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's supposed to frighten the hell out of you, right? right. <laughs> um, minimalism. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, minimalism <laughs> may, in fact, um, convey a single message better if that's your intent because it forces you to pinpoint yep. on a single thought or idea right. where maximum maximalism leaves a longer lasting impression. It's mm. more memorable because it impacts you visually and emotionally through a visual story. Right. Okay. So there are two very, very different approaches. Yep. Okay. Yep. So again, if you close your eyes and you think of like, you know, art and history. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't speak for everybody, of course. And I mean, I, I love the, you know, the idea of, um, you know, a Monet, right. Yes. And, and, yes. and remember, remember, um, Ferris Bueller's day off, yep. Yep. you know, when Cameron was staring <laughs> right. and he was zooming in yes. of the pixel, on just uh, yeah. the pixel of the yep. kid yep. because he found a story in the kid, right. Yep. He was able to pinpoint the story, you know, in that painting, yep. you look at Roy Lichtenstein, right. Yep. Yep. There's stories right in your face, a woman on the phone and she has a message. You remember that. Mm -hmm. Better yet, Salvador Dali. Uh -huh. Okay, try to analyze his fucking <laughs> shit. Okay, I went to the Salvador <laughs> Dali Museum in Tampa. Oh. And again, it was incredible because every one of his pieces had these giant stories that you were just trying wow. to unravel. Yeah. Okay, so there is something really, really, um, there's something to be said about being able to connect with people, you know, through a story emotionally in a piece of art. Yes. Absolutely. And I don't think, unfortunately, that minimalism has that potential. Minimalism is great and it has a place and I love it. I'm still a big proponent of it. Mm -hmm. But man, am I starting to see the value and, and rekindle my old love affair with ma with maximalism? I really am. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's I mean, the, the business that we're in is kind of a pendulum. Right. It swings back and forth. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and I we've talked about this being it's gone really hard towards the minimalist style. And that's all great yes but it's nice it's nice to see designers flexing a little bit you know what i mean agreed 100 like, uh, this is this is very good and, and exactly like you said it 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 just gets those creative juices flowing absolutely like you, you look at right? stuff like i was looking at all this stuff before before today and it was like man this is really really good oh, it's like so cool. it's it's awesome i saw this one piece and i don't know what it was for yeah but it was just bright bold 
like there were pieces over top of the text. Right. I didn't know what it was. Right. I can, couldn't read it. Can you imagine what your prof in college would be telling you if exactly you presented it. that? But it's in my head. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, it, it is, is it right? just beautifully done. It is so powerful Intriguing. for a brand yeah. if they can incorporate that kind of level yes. of storytelling. Yes. You know what? I'm looking at the skateboards on our wall behind yeah. you and look at them. Oh, Every yeah. single one, right? Like is kind of bold. It it goes to the edge, yep. right? I think the only one that might have some white space is that whole screaming hand in the, the middle hand, there, yeah. right? A exactly. little bit, only yeah. because I think it's just because of the, the composition itself wouldn't allow it. But yeah. everything else, edge to edge, just yeah. big, bold. Yeah. And they tell stories. Yes. Right? Yeah, totally. Dude, so definitely, like, I mean, that's a benefit of, of, of maximalism, right? Is just the emotional storytelling yep. through all these, you know, um, you know, intricate, like these intricate stories through all these like visuals and images, right? Yes. Another benefit, of course, if again, if you have the potential and your brand can back this up, mm -hmm. man, this isn't just, you know, going ahead or, 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 or um, shining ahead of your competition. This right. is like super fucking brand visibility, Big time. right? Because right now, like the one thing about maximalism is it totally trumps all the other design pollution that's out there, uh -huh. okay? If you're going somewhere and you see like, oh, there's another simple design. There's another simple design. Oh, there's a color. Here's a message. There's this. All of a sudden, you've got something screaming for your attention, okay? <laughs> yeah. If your brain can pull that off, yes. right? You can't not yes. look at it, yes. okay? So again, you've got, and again, that's why this box drew me to it, right? Because yeah. I'm looking at them like, okay, what are we going to be drinking? What are we drinking? We're drinking this, yes. right? It's yes. the same thing. Yeah, um, you know. So, so again, it's got like the the super visibility that can't be matched, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, obviously, you know the enhanced brand personality. Okay, mm -hmm. so while you know maximalism creates this whole, it creates the personality just by its very nature. Yeah. Okay. You're layering stuff. You're putting in messages, right? The visuals, the color choices, everything you put in there evokes this personality. And that's why this works so well between these two brands, yes. right? And you look at everything else. If a brand embraces this, you know, within their campaign, within their identity, you can't not understand what the personality is of that brand. Um, because of all these compositions, yeah. intentionally put together a giant story yes it does tell you know a better story it's better storytelling better storytelling yeah. right and Absolutely. again you know you go to some websites and they're so minimal they're so simple you have no fucking idea what it is <laughs> because they're scared yes. to tell you yeah so they just leave a letter <laughs> better <laughs> And that's it. You go to the website. Better. <laughs> better what? Better better this? You know, am I going to sleep better? No, you're going to get better mortgage yeah. rates because of, it's like, what, where'd that come what from? Like, I'm not even interested in this. How was I supposed to know? It's just the word better on the whole yeah. thing of white. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. So it's, it's in that sense, simplicity sometimes doesn't tell a great story. Yes. Okay. It, it forces you to dig deep. And, and unfortunately, you might lose people where if you've got this big maximalist, you know, impactful image in your face that header would tell the whole story totally. and captivate. Like, I mean, people don't even have to worry about scrolling, yeah. right? Like, they don't have to worry about that that damn fold because mm. it's all there above it, the fold, yes. okay? Yes. Um, so better storytelling. And, you know, the one thing is it allows for more creative flexibility. This is beautiful. Yes. Right? Which because, is what everybody wants. Right? We all, <laughs> well, because I think that's become lost yes. Yes. with this whole world yes. of simplicity. And again, I love what I've seen. I love that everything's so, so but it, but it, it it has it is well blanding, you know bland brands blanding. have become very bland yes you're and not boring wrong. right yeah. less is boring I'll take a yeah. little bit more of our friend Jack. He's actually pretty good. I can't believe I'm having more Jack. Odd, oddly, right? You know we've tried so many other things. We come back to Jack and be like, good, <laughs> good. It's all good. Um, you know the, the nice thing about maximalism is it really does allow for so much more flexibility, yes. creative wise, right? Yeah. Because it intentionally tries to break the rules. Yeah. You're allowed to do what you feel, yeah. not what is stamped in design principles from, <laughs> you know, the RGD and, and yeah. all these associations <laughs> saying how to fucking design. You know what? Maximum is like, no, yeah, fuck, fuck you. This. Yeah. Uh, let's have fun with this. Yeah. Right. And you can just start slapping stuff on top. And, and I mean, again, it's just you feel like an artist again. Yes. Right. Exactly. And for a, for a lot of us, that's why we got into this space. Yes. Right. Totally. We we chased this creative fire inside of us. We figured out how to make money from it. Yeah. But you know, you know, seeing a lot of what we do, we're, when some 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 of the designers, you know, out there, they're getting close to it, mm -hmm. but very few, I think, commercially, you know, make it feel like art. Yes. Right. Where yeah. I think this will bring that back. Yes. For a lot Absolutely. of people. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Now it's not to say that there's a risks. There are. 
Okay, because again, maximalism is. I mean, it's 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 not for everybody. I'm I'm already panicking at the thought. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. How do we? Well, the funny thing is, if you think of our customers, okay, and think of some of the the the, the social posts that we're creating on a regular basis. Oh, they're not simple. No, okay. Right. There are social posts usually contain two or three layered Elements. images yeah, yeah. with a texture over top. Yes, we have text. We have a logo. There's mm -hmm. a lot on there. I think even though that we have always talked and loved minimalism, mm -hmm. I think more of the stuff that's cranking out of this shop, you know, it more veers to maximalism, but controlled, controlled, controlled maximalism. Hmm. You know, I don't know, like if that's even if that is even a thing. But I, I wouldn't say that what we're doing is simple. No, always. you're right. You're you when you th when you mention that now, I'm thinking back on all these things that we've done. When yeah, we're and breaking them down. There is right? there is very by the very nature of it, there is not a lot of white space. We still create it and yep. it's very legible and stuff yep. like that. But you're right. The backgrounds are very busy. There's right. a lot of a lot of elements. Layers. We're trying Layers. to tell a story. Right. And that is a huge part of, yes. of maximalism. Yes. But I mean, the risks, mm. you know, and again, that works for us. Yeah. Won't work for everybody. But the risks, of course, you know, all, uh, you know, of course, um, you know, they can help brands stand out in the market. Mm -hmm. That's fine. This, we know there, there, there's good parts of this, but the risks, there's the risk of, you know, overwhelming people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause it's not for everybody. Right. Some of those cans, yeah. those craft beer cans, there's a lot going on. There's a lot. Going I fucking on. love them, <laughs> but there's a lot going on. There's one funky monkey, and I mean, <laughs> right. it's a monkey with the wings, and he's flying through this yeah. 70s cartoon looking building scape. And if you look, yeah. you're so. I think that's great. And I spent five minutes just turning the can to see the story. But some people might be like, oh, God, no, I can't handle that. I, it's too much. It's too much. It's, I don't know what's going on It here. must be horrible, right? <laughs> yeah. So you do risk overwhelming some people. Yes. Okay. True. Um, if you're not careful, okay, there is a potential for inconsistency for your brand. Okay. So you have to be careful. You want to employ maximalism in, in a brand and brand identity. Great, but you've got to make sure that you you keep certain elements very consistent. Otherwise, the brand's going to suffer. And I yeah. mean, more than more often than not, the brands that we help are the ones that are inconsistent. Yes. Right. Yes. So again, it's it's a challenge, mm -hmm. and it's a risk that you have to you know you have to almost like mitigate that risk by finding some fixed elements right. time and time and time again to let people rely on, feel comfortable with. Right. right? Um, and of course, you know, because the nature of maximalism is about incorporating things like ornate patterns and ornate shapes and trend you know, I don't want to say trendy but it, it incorporate all these these yeah. elements to yeah. make them eye catching you those elements usually come from what's trending right now right okay so if there's a certain kind of pattern that's trending mm -hmm. there's a good chance that would end up in Inside a maximalist design right colors for sure too. colors for yep. sure absolutely yep. so once those kind of you know pass on mm -hmm. right uh, it is by nature what maximalism always is yes but there is the potential that it will get passed. This is fucking beautiful. This this Jack Daniels McLaren, you know, um, what do you want to call this collaboration? Yeah. But as soon as you know neon is back out again, it's going to be dated. Uh, yeah, exactly. just something as simple as the color is going to outdate that, right? Yeah. But the, but this is the beauty of this kind of thing is what we talked about earlier. It's like it's this one off kind mm -hmm. of deal, right? It's like okay, we're going to fuse together. We could just have the regular Jack Daniels packaging and then the McLaren logo stuck on. Yep. It. Yep. But why wouldn't we take the opportunity, this opportunity, to kind of merge these brands together and make something right. a little more interesting? Right? right. Absolutely. And this is what gets yep. guys like us going. Hey, I should be drinking more Jack. <laughs> well, and again, you know what? Oddly enough, yeah. This and, and like I said, okay. Obviously, my first my first two brands have always been Ferrari and uh, Red Bull for F one. Right. You know, and sadly, number one and number two place, right? Mm -hmm. But until I saw this, right, McLaren was just another one in a sea of brands. Right. But I have followed them. They're doing really well. This came out. Now it's just like, you know what? I really do like the story that McLaren is telling. I really do like the drivers that McLaren has right now. Right. And so all of a sudden, this, this crazy ass package has now kind of brought Picture McLaren. Interest. It has. Yes. And it's brought it back to the, to, to the front. Yes. And you know what? There used to be this McLaren Lego set before that I passed <laughs> off on. I was like, oh, oh yeah. it's not Ferrari. McLaren. <laughs> if it's still available, You're I might just get it. <laughs> Ah, because nice. again it piqued my interest again and i yeah. was like you know what it made me revisit that experience yeah so it worked for me which is exactly the intent of boom this, right yes right yeah. absolutely that's great so this is this is 
exactly what we're talking about here. Exactly yes. what we're talking Beautiful. about. Beautiful. Okay. Nice, nice, nicely done, Jack Daniels. Nicely and done, Jack and McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pros and cons. Yeah. Okay. I oh, wrote yes. down a list of pros and cons mm-hmm. of maximalism in branding. Okay. Okay. I know we've talked about a lot of the risks and the, but here's goods and bads. Okay. okay. Pros. Visual impact and the ability to stand in a crowded marketplace. We've already talked about this. Yep. This is a huge. must. Huge pro. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, it's memorable. It's unique and it differentiates the brand. Yes. Absolutely yep. it has. Okay. Totally. It provides a platform for creative ex- expression and experimentation for designers yes. and for brands mm. okay because again brands can accept the fact that hey this is just going to be short-lived yeah but it'll be big it'll be impactful yeah. and it'll bring people to us yes. so let's push a little further let's try something a little yes. bigger a little bolder yeah. and brands have that opportunity to do that right mm-hmm. um it evokes strong emotions fosters deeper engagements yeah. okay and which i'm already you know testified that it, it's worked for me mm-hmm. in this case and that is the intent of maximalism to to, to, to connect with us on yeah. a more deep level right yes and then again it offers a hell of a lot more versi- versatility and flexibility, and flexibility you know in design approaches yes. which sadly we don't learn in school yep because they don't tell you to break rules in school they don't tell you because they're too busy trying to train you on the rules in school <laughs> okay so again fair, fair enough though right yeah yep. absolutely yep. right so this gives you that 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 medium that ability to you know what try something different yes. step outside the box That's step on the it. other side yes. of the line right exactly and so these, these are the kind of things that we uh, to our day-to-day you know i love i love the minimalist a- approach but sometimes you just want to stretch your legs a little bit, oh you know i mean dude, yeah. right and this is the kind of this is the kind of thing where it's just as challenging mm-hmm. as minimalism you know what i mean so and, and it's just but it's just a different hat that you're wearing absolutely yeah right yes love that yes cons Mm-hmm. Oh. Cons of oh, maximalism. There is some bad parts oh. for brands and for graphic design. Okay, <laughs> so again, we've already talked about this. There's a risk of overwhelming or cluttering mm. compositions if you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yes, this isn't exactly. just a matter of just like throwing, throwing every, shit on the, exactly yeah. right. And and that's what people have to understand. Mm-hmm. This is still there is there is a design component to this. Yes, this isn't just a matter of throw everything on the paper, throw everything on the computer screen, and it's done. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Um, the complexity may detract from your intended message. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, again, the ones, the designs that are, are best, the maximalist designs, have a message, have a story. But, again, if you're not doing this right and you're putting too much on there, that, that story could get lost yes. just with everything that's on there, right? Which yep. is intentional, yep. but it could also, you know, hurt you in this case. Yes. Um, the potential for higher production costs ah. because I mean, number one, okay, now it's going to be, you know, when you're creating a campaign like this mm-hmm. on an ongoing basis, right? You've got to make sure it, it, it requires, so it's not as easy to create a brand guide. Yes. If your brand embraces a maximalism type <laughs> of look now, exactly. coincidentally, <laughs> David Carson mm-hmm. and McAllen yeah. did a combination. He did a collaboration. And I, I don't know if you know that. Uh, no, did. I did. Yeah, with, with the whiskey. And the it scotch, was the right? scotch, yeah, right? right? And he did the boxes. He did branding. And it was ongoing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, try to find one now. Last yeah, time it's... I saw on eBay, they're over a thousand bucks oh, for a stupid. Man. And again, and it just keeps going up because, yeah. mm. you know, he created this series. He created this. And it's beautiful. Yeah, it's cool right? stuff. And he did a good job. Yeah. Okay. In that. But again, it cost them. Yes. Guaranteed, it yeah. costs them a pretty penny. <laughs> it was not cheap. Um, limited uh, applicability across industries and target audiences. Right, mm. you have to admit that it's not for everybody. This is true. It's not for every brand. Yeah, it's not for every customer. Yes, you have to be careful who you're using it for and how you're using it. Right, like yeah. the brand and then who the audience is. Yeah, right. And then of course, unfortunately, with that being said, you know because of that, it doesn't have universal appeal. Right. Okay. This is very limited. Um, you know. How many people that were walking through that, you know, the LCBO yesterday even knew who the fuck McLaren who, who, was exactly. or cared? Yeah. Okay. So that's why I'm not worried that there's another bottle waiting for me right there. Yeah. Okay. Because again, there's not that many people that are following this. This is true. So, um, you know, so again, there's pros and there's cons. Yeah. But see, this is not going to, this is not going to scare away your regular Jack drinker. Hell no. I don't think. But would your regular Jack, uh, Jack drinker pay a premium price for oh. this bottle? I see. See, okay. this is a lot smaller and, and it was at more. the same price for somebody that you can, you can get 30% more oh, 
with just the regular Jack see. label. Okay, Boom. gotcha. There you go. Right? Okay. I appreciate okay. it. Yeah, yeah. So it, Could they? Yes. Yeah. All right. But you still have your regular Jack option, right? Absolutely yeah. you okay. do, right? So this is for, this is for people with... Uh, you, you know, you're exactly like a designer or uh, an F1, F1 fan, fan yeah. or yeah. somebody who exactly. wants. And, and this yeah. is the funny thing. OK, with this specific um, collaboration, Jack Daniels and F1 don't really go hand in hand. It was drinking and driving. No, well, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm sure. Of course. Yeah, I'm sure the guy in the McLaren car has the Jack going straight from his helmet. You know, you know it's funny. You say, I, I wasn't actually going on that angle, but oh, you're absolutely okay. right. No, you're absolutely right. A car brand and an alcohol brand probably yeah, don't go it just best. Doesn't really work. You know. But. However, I'm sure if you look at NASCAR, you know, Bud Light oh, is yeah. a huge sponsor, totally. right? Yeah, yeah. No, but what I mean is um, the demographic of Jack Daniels drinkers aren't necessarily the demographics of F1 this is true. followers. Right. Right. And again, um, I haven't had Jack's since we've gone down this whiskey road. I drank mm-hmm. Jack's as a kid. Yep. Okay. And I loved it. Yeah. Not a kid. As, <laughs> as a teenager. I was going to say, you're the luckiest kid in the world, man. I bet you all, everybody was over at your house. Uh, yeah, it was pretty popular. <laughs> We're going to have some craft dinner and some Jack. And some Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, can I have some Coke? <laughs> no, unless it's with some Jack. We're going to Moss's Jack house. Jack and Coke. We're going to Moss's house and getting really hammered on <laughs> Jack. But I mean, yeah, again, I know you the you last time yeah. I actually remember drinking Jacks. I mean, again, I was I was early thirties, mm-hmm. okay, and um, early thirties at a country bar. <laughs> oh, perfect! And yeah. people were shooting it. Oh, yeah. and I was just like, yeah, and sure. I liked it. I liked Jacks, and yeah. I was just like, yeah, but, but that was my memory of Jacks, right? And then it's been, you know, it's been a good what, like fifteen years since I had fucking Jacks, mm-hmm. right? Maybe twenty, and it's just like. Wow, right? Like it's it's now that brought me back. My connection to Formula One has brought me back to Jacks. Mm, okay, so interesting. it's interesting. So I think you know the markets are so different on this one that again Formula One is trying to pull it in. Yeah. But you know, I, anyway, I don't know. We have this different angle altogether. It's it's you're absolutely right. It's it's brilliant. It's it's kind of one of those things where it you know the brand. Yep. And it's this 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 marriage of the two, and you're like, hey, maybe I should try this again. Right? Mm-hmm. And boom. Before you know it, it's like, hey, you know what? Exactly. And, and really, this is this is not bad. It's not. We have gone through a great journey with whiskey, with bourbon, with scotch, and all said and done, this is actually, I'd say mid, yeah, mid level at the very least, if not mid to upper. I would drink level this with again. everything, yeah. and I would, uh, I would, I would and yeah. I will. And yeah, exactly. Right? After this, I'm going back. I'm buying another one. I'm buying another one of these to keep. Right? Yeah. Just for just because I'm I'm a collector, and yeah. this is what I do. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's kind of one of those old school, you know, um, like what they do it with, um, what they did with uh, cornflakes and stuff like that. Oh, remember? when they put, yeah, where you put all kinds of shit on it, and yeah, then, absolutely. And then it's like, then they go with the, you know, twenty years later they go with just take them, just eat them plain, yep. taste, taste them again for the first, taste time. them again for like, the first. I think remember that was that? the slogan. That yeah, was and act, it's just like brilliant. Oh, that was the first thing I fucking yep. did when I saw that. I was like, I'm going out and buying cornflakes, right? So it's kind of one of those re up of an old brand absolutely you know uh, like a reanimation or whatever i don't know but yeah it's just well again bringing it back bringing right it bringing back, back yeah. the, the memories Your and memories. nostalgia and bringing back the whole yes because now the jack drinkers from 20 years ago yeah. are a lot more you know mature now. yeah they probably had better whiskeys but hey there's a connection. There's, There's an emotional connection, connection yes. right? And now, you know, I've evolved to F1, yep. not NASCAR. Yep. And again, so have they apparently. Yes, exactly. So, fucking A. Yeah, that's fucking really good. Fucking A, Jax. <laughs> and F1. And in all fairness, although McLaren will not beat Ferrari or um, Red, Bull, <laughs> Red Bull, yep, I will be cheering for them as a number three. <laughs> and that's huge three. Yeah. in F1. If anybody <laughs> follows F1, fucking, if you can get number three, that's huge. Yeah, and they're, they're doing pretty good for that. That's awesome. All right. Okay. So. I'm going to finish this off. Yeah. Okay. With actually providing tips. Mm. Okay. For creating a maximalist design. Okay. Broke down the process, broke down my process, everything that we've talked about. And we brought this together mm-hmm. into nine points to remember. Nice. Nine points. Nine. Okay, kids. That's easy. Remember these. <laughs> yeah. Write them down. All right. Number one. Yeah. Okay. Start with a strong concept. Yes. The benefit of maximalism is that it tells a good story. Mm-hmm. Okay, so make sure you know what it is you want to tell with this. A clear story to guide your design choices 
and your messaging, okay? Yep. So that's the first thing you got to nail down, first and foremost. Nice. Number two, establish a visual hierarchy, okay? Mm. And I know that we always say this breaks rules, but this doesn't mean abandon hierarchy because hierarchy is just good UX. It, that's totally right. right. Yep. You know, very, you know, your element size, colors, weights, placements to guide attention. You got to remember, if, if you want the big theme to be somebody's face or a person, you make sure that that owns majority of the real estate on there yep. and add all the elements to tell that story and bring your eye down, okay? Yes. So establish that visual hierarchy. Extremely important, yes. okay? big time. Number three, if you're just starting on this, if you're just kind of getting into this and, and, and wanting to try something, do yourself a favor. Utilize a grid. Okay? Yes. Utilize a grid. Beautiful. Seriously. It yep. sounds silly, but you know, when you organize with grids or fr frameworks, um, it helps you create a well-structured composition, a right. piece. Okay? Yep. And so then this way, it's one less thing to worry about, right? And it, everything will snap into place. And yep. You just got to like place the elements to tell the right story. And you can use, like that will help with your hierarchy, right? With Absolutely that, grid it will, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's you know one less thing is, to think about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So remember that. Okay. You can, you can drop that one in the future. Once you got this, once you got this down packed, yes. but to start with, it makes your life easier yes. in this case. Okay. Yep. Number four, Beautiful. don't be afraid of color. Mm. Okay. Embrace vibrant, bold colors that work together, that enhances and impacts. You know, yes. the whole point of this is to just like create this, this visual energy yeah. that stops people in their tracks. Yeah. So this is where it's like, it doesn't matter if colors clash, mm -hmm. if they work together in this case, yeah. right? Like this is your, your, your opportunity to be like, why the hell do they have green and brown <laughs> together? <laughs> right? Nobody uses green and brown together. It work. But it works in this. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. you know, don't be scared of color in yeah. this case, right? Everything you've learned about color, throw it out throw the it fucking out window <laughs> and put it down on this design. Oh, hallelujah. Okay? Yeah. Number five, thoughtful typography. Yes. Okay. So again, choose your fonts carefully mm -hmm. to complement the aesthetic, the energy, the intensity of you want uh, of your piece, okay? You know, think about um the impactful messages that you want to embrace and make sure that those are the fonts that you focus on are heavier, right? The lighter messages in the back, tone them down a bit, and then again, you know, along the lines of typography, the messaging Okay, that has to be complemented, right? You want your big message, make sure you choose the right font, the yeah. right size for that message, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So number five, you know, think twice with, with, with typography. Maybe that's a better term than thoughtful there typography. You go. Yeah. Think, twice, think twice, okay? Yeah. Number six, repeat, repeat, repeat. Oh, I love this, the patterns. Okay. Absolutely, um, maximalism, mm. okay? has patterns always. Yes. And the reason why it uses uses patterns is because it creates and it creates rhythm, it unifies compositions, mm -hmm. right? And, and 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 it does that by incorporating patterns. Yes. Okay? And just like this, like again, this yeah. box yeah. has got this pattern. It does nothing more than just unify front to back everything and pulls it together. Yep. Okay? Maybe old moss, you mm -hmm. know, from two, three, five years ago, would be like, why do we need that? Yeah, Get rid of it. Useless. Simplify yeah. it. Yeah. But now I'm appreciating it. I'm like, no, no, no. That Not unifies the entire thing. That's right. 1998 moss would say, hey, hell 1998 yeah. 1998 <laughs> moss is like loving that. You're right. Oh, my God. I'm bringing back 1998 yeah, moss. That's right. You remember him? Yeah. Jeez, you know. <laughs> Out comes the neons, the hat sideways. <laughs> Shit, yeah. Beastie Boys cranked yes. again. This has been the Beastie Boys it week, has hasn't it? Yes, it has. <laughs> All right. So repeat, repeat, repeat. Repetition yes. is important when it comes to Love. maximalism, okay? Yep. Number seven, avoid empty spaces. <laughs> Otherwise known wow. as fuck white space. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to say it, it hurts me it's to say sad that. sad to hear that, but, but yes. The point of maximalism, you want to fill the space to create this visually dense and impactful composition. Yeah. That's intentfully what you do when yeah. it comes to this, yes. okay? Yep. So in this case, avoid white space as much. Mm -hmm. Fill it up if you can. Fill it up just enough. Yeah. So, you know, you don't want this thing looking like it's like a, a, a freaking antique market <laughs> shop, okay? But at the same time, yeah. you know, you don't need all this empty white space. Fill that shit up. Customers must love that. <laughs> they totally. must love the idea of this, okay? Number eight, <laughs> layer everything and mix 
styles. So the beautiful thing about maximalism is it incorporates different layers for different elements, shape underneath, a texture on top of that, a font on top of that, right? This is shit that I usually, I tell our people to back, separate them. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for this. But if you're embracing this maximalist look, feel, you want layers, you want depth. And again, you know, if you can incorporate textures, a piece of paper versus something digital versus an abstract image and layering that, I mean, that's the nice thing about this. Yeah. You're layering not just, you know, your messaging, but styles yeah. and, and and prints and everything, right? That's that's when this shit really gets oh, kind of crazy. Totally, totally. Right? I read a guy, his his thing was like, you know, you get on your layer and you take, say, maybe your level, your levels mm. and, and you just pin it. Mm. You max it right out because it goes, it's, it's going to fuck you up because it is. It goes against everything you know. Everything you've learned. But hey, what the hell? This, this is, is where this is the experimentation. You know, when you're like going multiply <laughs> layer and you're going yeah. down to like 20, 15 yeah. percent. Yeah. No, no, no. This yeah. is like no multiply 100 <laughs> percent. Let me see multiply 100 yeah. percent. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And number nine, last but not least, yep. shock and awe. Oh, okay, that's my favorite. Ooh. Shock and awe. Incorporate the unexpected elements that are going to actually capture people. They're going to evoke people's emotions. They're strong emotions. You yeah. want to shock mm. when people see this. You don't. If this is if this is just a whole bunch of busyness, yeah. people will be like, "Mess, yeah. go on." It's still noise. Exactly. Point, even then it's if, noise. Yeah. Even more. Then it's the worst. Then kind it's of noise, the, then right? it, yeah. When you miss on this, <laughs> right? The whole point of this is to shock and awe and create something almost like graffiti, like what you'd see Banksy doing, right? Yeah. Cause doing mm-hmm. something that's going to shock people, stop them in their tracks, yeah. and be like, What the hell am I looking at? Yes. So, intentfully try to shock and awe. Yes. Right? Oh, so, number nine it. tips for creating a maximalist design. Yes. So, Beautiful. You know, I mean, I, I want to bring this back to Zip yeah. Factor. I really do. I, I don't know. And I, I think it's going to be scary for some of our customers. So I have to think about how to do this. But I need this back in my life. Fuck it. You know what? <laughs> Maybe Zip Factor can stay the way it is. Yeah. Maybe this can be brought into the angry design. Could be. Right? Because yes. I think maybe this is more our vibe. Yeah. I love and I appreciate simplicity. Right? Mm-hmm. Do I think that we've gone too far? I do think design's mm-hmm. gone too far. Yeah. It feels... So again, and people are complaining about it. Sometimes everything feels a little boring. Yeah. It looks the same. You know, a lot of the people that we follow have got fantastic pieces. But, you know, you can't argue that what we're seeing in the marketplace yeah. with what are the brands are doing, what fashion is doing, what tech's doing. I mean, yeah. they're oversimplifying. Yes. And it's kind of boring. Yeah, it is. It, it kind of is. And yeah. maybe that's been in part why I have felt, you know, burnt out because I'm not feeling creative. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, look. Enter <laughs> minus 40. No, nope. minus 30 this yep. time. Oh, that's close, Let me take but... that dot and turn it into a triangle yeah. and change it a different color. Yes. Boom. Done. <laughs> Thank you. $50,000. Right. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a genius. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> the, the creativity is missing in this case. It is. It really right? is. Where this, if we can find practical you know uh, applications for this yep. you know get opportunities like this this collaboration with jackson mclaren yep. you know find opportunities with our customers or even for ourselves to do yeah, this totally man i think this is going to reinvigorate so much of the design community Absolutely. i think we need this we need this we do we do because again it's a chance to flex which is good which, which, Hell yeah. which is why we got into this because i mean i I've, i don't know about you but as i got older I appreciated the minimalist kind of style mm-hmm. a lot more. But when I was young, man, I was throwing shit on the page. Like, exactly. Like really hitting so it what hard, happened? you know? Yeah. Did we, were we just trained to do this? Did the design community force us to do this? Because everybody is going simplicity, messaging, this. Hey, I appreciate that. That's what's turned this business to what it is. Yeah. But, but there was something in my design soul that was missing. Exactly. And I'm thinking this was it, dude. Yeah, I I'm, think you're absolutely right. Like I'm this thinking is, this this is this, this screams creativity. Yes, totally. It does. Yeah. And it's challenging, which we all absolutely we all look for a challenge. This yeah, is absolutely. this is why we do this, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is. So I mean, this is the kind of stuff. Yeah, I I, I really I'm really heartened to see that it's a that it's coming up. People are doing this. There's there's people talking about it. And Absolutely. There's some really good work being there done. There is some really cool shit awesome. that's happening. Yeah. 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 Which is really good. And it's not new. 
People it's have been totally doing this, not. But it's just kind of one of those forgotten things like Jack Daniels. Uh, wow, <laughs> you're so right, buddy. You, you know, know you'll I mean? always have those purists like David Carson. That's who's right. been doing this for the past 20, and, 30 and years. And like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, I, guys, I've always been doing this. I haven't stopped. <laughs> Maximalism, sure. Yeah, right. Ahead, whatever. But, then, you know, yeah. but the reality is for the rest of us, I mean, yeah. I'm curious. Like, you know, just like in school, you know, we learned about brutalism yes. and industrial. We learned right. about all these art forms and just like yeah, another art form. Yeah. But you know what? I think the world needs this right I think now you're because right. yeah. man, it's just it's just too much of the design pollution, the noise. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Design noise. No, it, it, it's exactly it's the blending. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly the blending, what you say. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's just there's everything looks the same. Yeah. In in certain regards. And again, like, there is a challenge to yeah. make. But I mean, the challenge is to make something look different mm-hmm. when it's the same. And again, if it's it's all the everything looks so simple and everybody's simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. Yeah. I'm tired of looking at the same kind of websites. Yeah. When I see certain websites that embrace a little bit more of this, I'm playing. I'm kind of fun. I yeah. spend more time on there. Yeah. So exactly. there's a good opportunity right now, I think, to kind of jump ahead of everybody else. Totally. And this is how. Yeah. And this and and, and we look at at like Burger King and Pepsi are going back to back old, to old retro logos. Yep, which, absolutely. Which were which there was thought there was design. There was design stuff yeah, put into it. It's not point. that Burger King font was not a font. Yes, you're you know right. You're I mean? right. Like it was it was a hand drawn. Somebody came up with that. Kind oh, of stuff. it's beautiful. Yes, right? but this is the kind of stuff. But yeah, there's there's far more creativity inside of of this. Mm-hmm. I think than. You know what we've been seeing in in the last couple of, you know, and there's there's something about a sexy clean website. Uh, there you know is what I mean? there is some, but I'll, I'll but I am the Apple tired of yeah, them. You know, just, you know you, what? You, See, I'm tired of looking at those sexy clean websites. Well, you are. That's why I am like my searches have changed. I'm doing a lot more shit on Chat GPT. Mm-hmm. I'm using Google less because it's a disaster to try to source and find stuff with. <laughs> Tell me right? About it. I'm trying different search engines. I'm getting desperate. Wow. Right. And because, again, it's like you want information, but it's like I'm getting tired of spending so much time aimlessly searching on Google for stuff. <laughs> and then I get to a website and it's simple and it makes me think and yeah. we think and, mm-hmm. you know, like, OK, um, oh, no, dude, it's just lately <laughs> I've been getting tired. <laughs> yeah. Of wow. This stuff That's... Where it's like, you know, it's like when I see something now that catches my eye, I appreciate appreciate yes and that's the challenge because simplicity in design it's beautiful it's it elegant it's awesome and i always love that it gets but, that nice message across yes but you know even now apple's website mm. snore <laughs> like again it's like oh here we go again you know big bold phone <laughs> yeah. nice big close-up yes mm-hmm. i already own one yeah yeah and yeah. you're <laughs> letting me know i need to own another you know piece of your world yeah yeah the one that you have isn't good enough right. so <laughs> And um, so, you know, it's like, give me some personality. Yes, and, exactly. um, you know, when I went and got this, I spent, you know, extra time in the beer aisle. I looked at the craft stuff. Nice. I was smiling. I was picking up cans. <laughs> and I was appreciating yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah, So, you know, and I also spent like 100 bucks on cans. <laughs> I bought $100 worth of, like, did all you? these craft beer. I did, 100%. Oh I don't even drink much of that craft say, beer. You don't, I don't. You're not a beer drinker, right? I don't. But, I mean, oh. I like the cans. And I kind of be like, you oh, know. Okay. I want to be able to be like, hey, you want some of this? Yeah, check you this want out. some of this? Yeah, I dig the somebody, cans. Somebody comes over and they're like, wow, what the right, hell is right, that? Right, exactly. It's a conversation piece. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I think, awesome. you know what? You can tell excited I am. About yeah, this. totally. I am genuinely excited about this. Yeah. I, am, I'm, I am excited that I rediscovered this. Yes. And I, when I first brought this to you, mm-hmm. You like perked up like a kid in a candy store. Totally. You're like, Whoa. I was like, what? this is kind of this is kind of a left turn for us, I think, a little bit. But not. No, but I mean it was exciting to learn about it again. Uh, yes, it was yes. something oh, that absolutely. we have all it almost like we all forgot. Yes. Yes. And it's just yes. like, oh, that yeah. feels so right again. Yes. And I think that that's what's missing right now I in our lives is, is right. bringing this creativity, bringing this, you know, layered master or no layered, um, you know, mess, yes. uh, you know, like just kind of organized, chaos. organized chaos, organized yes. chaos. <laughs> this is going to be organized chaos yes. in design. Yes, it and d- that's, absolutely is. I implore you all mm. to embrace something, create something, post something. Yes. Tag us when you do. Yes. Okay. And want to see again, this stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely want to do because mm-hmm. um, again, because this episode was inspired yeah. by, you know, one of one of our angry designers mm-hmm. and um, and I want to see more. Yeah. So get yeah. to it, people. Do it. We love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, dude. <laughs> Woohoo. Nice. All right. 
Wow, yep. I got the creative juices going. Yep. Yeah. I think this is going to be a good weekend. I'm going to go home and create some mess. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Ah. Woo. All right. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you found something from this. I hope you got something cool out of this episode. You know, um, go check out Maximalism. Check out some of the work that's out there. Yep. Play. Get creative. You know what? Do something for yourself and find that magic and see if this actually kind of in invigorates something that you had no idea you had. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Please tag us on Instagram. Hit us up. Say hi if you can. Um, we're now on YouTube and YouTube is going very well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, follow us on YouTube. Watch us on YouTube. Yeah. We're now in color. <laughs> we dropped the black and white thing. So now you can see how pasty we actually are. We are Canadian and yeah, we have we a lot get, of snow. Yeah, we don't get a lot of sun up here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think it's like one month a year. Yeah. Actually, I'm not going to lie. We saturate those colors so we don't look so pasty. So when you meet us in person, you'll be oh, like, yeah, wow, just, they're whiter whoa. than I thought. Are they ghosts? <laughs> And again, please leave us a review. Let us know, you know, how much you love or hate us or how much we have helped or hurt your life yeah. and career. I, I hope in general that we have aided to this. Yes. And um, and just if you got one small thing out of this episode that piqued your interest, I think our job is done. Totally. Right. It's well worth checking out. Well, maximum. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just for inspiration. Absolutely. Alone. Yes. Yeah. All right, everybody. Okay. My name's Massimo. My name's Sean. Stay creative and maximalist. <laughs> and stay angry and maximalist. <laughs> peace, 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 peace. Overdid that one. Oh, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.